Hi class, so uh, I am your instructor for the Hybrid Bio 181 course for the semester. My name is Louis Obermiller. Um, I have a PhD in Molecular and Cellular Biology and Biochemistry that I received from ASU in 2000. Um, and so my expertise is in everything generally small. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, what you can expect from this course and what sort of materials you need to be successful in this course. Um, and so I've started this page at mesacc.edu. You'll see a yellow circle on your end. I can't see that. Um, I think it changes to blue whenever I click on something. Um, so you can follow along. But anyway, this is uh, mesacc.edu. And then on the top, you'll see that there are several links. And then this is the one that we're going to use for this course, which is Canvas. So if you click on that, it will bring you to the dashboard. Um, I'm teaching several classes this semester, including biotechnology, special projects, um, and then two 181s and four labs. So I have a eight, total of eight classes. Um, this course is different than yours, your, uh, but I'm gonna show the video to both of the classes or make it available, even though this class I will be teaching um, in person more often than this class because this is a larger class. Um, so I'm going to focus on this class here, which is uh, spring 2019 by 181 section 31172. Um, and then the, again, there's two lab sections and then they will be divided into two groups. Um, and all of that's available on your My Maricopa and your course schedule. So you just need to make sure that you follow um, where you're supposed to be and at what times. All right, so I'm going to click on this. And it will bring us to the home page. Now, your view is going to be different than mine. Um, and I can show you the student view, although it's not really that much different, but I can do more things on this end. And so I'm, I'm going to leave it here. Um, this is going to discuss the minimum computer skills that you need and the requirements. So you need an internet connection, obviously, since this is a hybrid class, the lectures are delivered online. The labs are half at home and half at school. And the reason is that we have the labs at school is because um, there is expensive pieces of equipment that I couldn't uh, possibly ask you to purchase on your own, such as $10,000 microscopes and $15,000 spectrophotometers. Um, no one would sign up for this class if they had to spend $35,000 on equipment. <clears throat> so when you come into the lab, uh, you'll be using expensive equipment, and then the labs that you do at home are relatively cheap although you'll need to buy a kit, and I'll show you that link in a second. All right, so anyway, read over this. Uh, make sure you have all of the computer and internet connections that you need. Um, this will help you, this technical help will help you if you get stuck, and it can help you with Canvas. And then here, we'll have dis you can have discussions about uh, what's going on in the class. If you get stuck on certain things, like for example, one of the first assignments is to do uh, a scientific method uh, of crickets and I'll show you that in a second and um, a lot of students get stuck there so you can ask your fellow classmates um, questions in here just by clicking on this discussion and adding in a new discussion there is one lab uh, that um, you'll be required to add some information in here because it has to do with population genetics and so we need a population in order to study population genetics um, so this is the student canvas guide. One of the first uh, extra credit uh, points that you can get for this class is to post a picture. That way I can put a name to a face. Um, it makes it easier for me to learn your names. Um, so make sure that you post a picture of yourself that's clear, not one that's like you climbing on, a, on the face of Yosemite or, you know, your stuffed animal, or your cat or your dog or whatever um that's the purpose of this it's, and so um if you click on this and then you go to uh look at you have to open a, a new window and type on uh, student picture post I already sort of searched that all right well i guess that's not good for canvas oh, there it goes okay so there's a bunch of other stuff. 
Um, this one is probably the easiest thing to do. Don't so, but don't put a panda avatar on your profile picture. Um, and this works on uh, not just an Android uh, device, but it works on a computer too. So it's essentially the same. And then just follow the guidelines to to the post a profile. Um, don't create a panda avatar. Um, but anyway, post your profile picture. Um, so this is probably more appropriate. And so you upload a picture, take a picture with your computer's camera or whatever, open the settings, post a picture. Again, this will probably be a panda. But again, don't put a panda, use your own picture. There's the panda. Um, and then if you do that, uh, on the day that, by the day it's due, I'll look through there and people that have a picture, I will give them 10 extra credit points towards the, end, uh, the, their total score in the class. All right. So let's go back to home. And, uh, if you get stuck in Canvas, if you've never used Canvas, then, um, this will help you with various questions. The lectures are going to be delivered online. For the class, these are actually uh, recorded during live lectures. I thought that would be best. Although there's several failures of cameras and audio and video equipment, um, technology is great when it works, and usually uh, at some point it will fail. And so anyway, I'm going to redo these videos um, so that I have a virtual whiteboard instead of the whiteboard that you see in the videos because it's difficult to see. Um, I realized from the, the um, actual screen. So there's two ways that lectures are delivered. They're the same lectures, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. Um, Panopto is a software that allows you to view lectures. And so I'll open this uh, to, to look at it. And so you'll see that there's two sets of lectures. Uh, there are 25 lectures total. Um, these lectures are by date. Um, and then uh, right here at the bottom, you can only see 25 per page. So this is an entire semester of lectures here, starting at this first one. But if you click on 50, it will show you the other set of lectures um, at the bottom that are actually sorted by chapter. And so this will go from chapter, from lecture one, all the way from chapter one, through the entire course, to the last uh, lecture, which is lecture 25. Um, and so you can do either one, they're essentially the same, or you can look at both of them if you want, it doesn't matter. I'll start down here. Um, and if you click on this, um, you'll see that the way that Panopto operates, and this will probably make an echo, is that um, there, there's video of me with the whiteboard here. The cameras are auto tracking. There's nobody filming that. This is what we see on the screen. And then this is what, uh, uh, I'm going through uh, moment by moment. So if you fast forward this, you can see that it'll go through what the screenshot is and what's coming up. Um, and so anyway. Um, you can, the good thing about uh, taking an online class is that you can rewind and fast forward this however you want, and then you can go back over the lectures, and then this is sort of the captioning for each one of those. And so I'll just mute that, um, and then you can see, you can change the volume, you can change the speed. Some students uh, in my genetics class like to watch it at two times the speed, so they can cover more lecture in less time but essentially that's the good thing about panopto is it has all three of these different things going on at the same time uh the bad thing is is none of these are captured so uh closed caption so if you can't actually understand what i'm saying um then you can go to the videos not in panopto but rather in let me go back home <coughs> and youtube which are here you just click on that link and it'll bring you to the YouTube videos, which are actually captioned by Google and uh, the our Center for Teaching and Learning actually helped me capture, caption these two. <clears throat> so 
So if we went through this lecture here, so there's not such an echo, but um, and so you can see that um, these are captioned. And these are the exact same lectures that are on Panopto. So either one, you're going to get the same thing, except in uh, Panopto, this is a separate screen where on YouTube, it actually puts it as a smaller screen in the lower right hand corner. So as you go through the course, um, and I'll show you the schedule, you should watch the videos for each of the chapters so that you uh, keep on pace. I think one of the harder things about taking an online class uh, for lectures is that you have to sort of discipline yourself uh, to watch uh, the videos and to keep up with the, the lecture material on your own. Okay, so that's how the lectures will be delivered um, through either Panopto or uh, YouTube. I am working on a new set of lectures uh, that will be similar to this and will be using a virtual whiteboard, which is this, uh, which is Microsoft Whiteboard, and so I can sort of draw on the board and then you'll be able to see what I'm writing uh, on the whiteboard as well. And so I'll update those on my YouTube channel um, as I complete them. All right. So every chapter has a PowerPoint and they're split up uh, by chapter PowerPoints. I'm updating the PowerPoints as well. Um, and so all the newer PowerPoints will have revision 19, which means uh, that's for 2019. So this is the first chapter that's been revised. And if you click on that, it'll open it. You can download this. Um, you'll need a PowerPoint or a PowerPoint viewer to look at it. Canvas is kind of brilliant and then at, uh, it decodes that for you and so you can look at it on your screen without the, any kind of viewer. And so you can go through the lecture this way. And you can follow along, uh, uh, along uh, while you're watching the lectures as well if you want to open that in a new window. Anyway. And again, if you have any questions, you can email me at obermiller at mesacc.edu. <clears throat> All right, so the exam material comes from the PowerPoints. What I cover on the PowerPoints is the only material that you'll need for uh, the exams. Um, however, I can't put every single thing that I want to talk about on the PowerPoints because then uh, that sl those slides would be incredibly busy. So make sure that you listen to what I say as you're following along on the PowerPoints because I, there's a lot more information uh, than what's on the PowerPoint slides. And you also have to be able to think critically. And so you'll have quizzes that sort of test your ability to not just regurgitate information, but uh, you're able to piece that together to solve uh, biological uh, questions or issues. All right. so. The PowerPoints are all here, and it covers every single chapter all the way up through chapter 17. Um, this class is a difficult class because it covers not only biology, but uh, chemistry, and then um, a foreign language as well, because the language of science is uh, Greek and Latin. So uh, a lot of you are, are going to go into medicine, and so a good example of this is that you probably heard the word stat used several times in a hospital or medical setting. That actually comes from the Latin statum, which means right away. So if you didn't know what stat meant and you were in a hospital, you would just stand around and, and have no idea uh, what to do because uh, you wouldn't know that that means right away. And so uh, it's the same thing uh, for this course. Um, a lot of the terms that we use in biology um, and in science derive from Greek and Latin, including the periodic table of the elements. 
And so you're going to have to learn some new words uh, as you go along. So you could easily make note cards for these words, uh, these definitions, and, or you could use the crossword puzzles that I've sort of made up because I thought they would be a little more fun than studying note cards. But it's up to you. I don't take these. Uh, I don't collect these for a grade. I'm not. They're not taken up in any way. And in fact, I give you the answers to them as well. So we'll click on this. And then I'll show you an example of the crossword for chapter one. So the first question here is to a cross is the complete genetic code of an organism. That word is genome. And you may have heard it in the news, uh, or you may not have, but that is exactly what that means. That's the definition. So if I say genome, you should know that that is the complete genetic information, the complete DNA code um, of that organism. And so we can go back to the class, and then if we scroll down, you'll see that below that I have the answers for all the crosswords. So if we can click on the crossword puzzle answers, you'll see that indeed two across is genome. So for chapter one, you should watch the chapter one uh, lecture video either on YouTube or on Panopto. You should uh, look at the PowerPoints, although they're available on both YouTube and Panopto. Um, you should know the material from the PowerPoints. Um, you should know all of the words on the crossword puzzles. And then these the crossword puzzles don't have every single word that you need to know, uh, but it's a good start. Check your answers and make sure that you get all the answers correct and you know their meanings. And then every chapter has a study guide. So if we go to chapter two, for example, um, there are review questions for every chapter. You should be able to answer all of these questions. Um, I don't have the answers to these uh, review questions because I want you guys to be able to answer them on your own. But if you get stuck or you uh, don't know the answers to them, then uh, by all means, feel free to email me or you can come to office hours um, and we, I can help you with them. So we'll go back home and then uh, I'll scroll down through the PowerPoints, the crossword puzzles, the crossword puzzle answers, and the chapter study guides for each of the chapters. When we get to chapter 14, genetics, um, you guys should be able to do these uh, genetics problems as well. Um, and then there are answers to them uh, here for each of the questions. Again, if you get stuck or you're not sure how I got the answers, you're more than welcome to email me or come to my office. And then these are audio recordings, so if you don't uh, have a video available or a video player available, you can download these as MP3s and you can listen to the lectures as well. Um, I don't have an in-person class this semester, so I won't be recording any live uh, audio uh, for this particular semester. All right, so that's pretty much the home page. Um, you can look for announcements. I've already put out an announcement to watch the intro video for the class and then go over the syllabus um, to make sure you guys understand what you need and what you're supposed to do uh, for the course. And then again, um, you know, you should check the announcements before every class in case, you know, I get sick or my kids get sick or something like that. I'm not going to show up. I'll let you know exactly what's going on if my office hours get canceled for whatever reason. Sometimes I'm writing grants. I've had some partner things going on with ASU, and so I'm not able to make my office hours. So you'll know about it beforehand, hopefully, unless I get hit by a bus um, in the announcements. So um, the next thing is assignments. The assignments are laid out by groups. Up on your student view, you'll probably have a way to look at the assignments by date and also by group. I'm just going to leave them as group. So every uh, chapter also has a quiz. And so you should watch the videos for chapter one, do the crossword puzzles for chapter one, check your answers, make sure you know uh, the answers to all of those uh, vocabulary questions, do the study guides, and then take the quiz. So there's 
essentially five things that you need for every chapter to make to allow you to be successful in the course so if you click on chapter one intro to biology um, there's a quiz here and then um, it tells you that for each quiz there were 10 points you have 20 minutes to complete it you get three attempts to take the quiz and I take your highest quiz score um, you're allowed to take this uh, three times and so the questions are generated from a bank of questions that I've made um, and so it's in your best interest because these questions are very similar to the ones you'll see on the exam even if you get a hundred percent on the quiz it's in your best interest to take it again because you'll see probably see different questions that you didn't see on the first quiz so that's how it works um, so that will ask you questions um, So here's an example. Which of the following types of cells utilize DNA as their genetic material but do not have DNA encased within a nuclear envelope? And the answer to this is archaeobacteria. I know that because these are different kingdoms. There's animalia, plant. Um, archaea is, uh, again, this is from archaic, which is Latin, which means old. And so these are old living organisms, the first living organisms that biologists believe we're on earth are bacteria so this is a bacteria and that is an, uh, classified as a prokaryote karyote means nucleus and so pro means before and so these are before there's a nucleus so this would be the correct answer um, and then there's a the kingdom protus those are eukaryotes you means true and so that's they have a true nucleus in fact all of these have a nucleus except the archaeobacteria so that's the sort of uh, critical thinking that you need to do. Um, we uh, will talk about each of these kingdoms and what their characteristics are in chapter one. And so you need to be able to apply that to the sort of questions that you'll see on the exam. All right, so I'm gonna go back home. I just want to make sure it's still recording. Okay, so assignments. You'll have quizzes that you need to do for every chapter. Those are due um, the day of the exam. So your first exam is on February 20th at 2 o'clock. Um, and that will cover chapters 1 through 5. So you should have completed all five chapters by February 20th. Again, the beauty of this is that you can do a lot uh, or a little bit, but it's really important that you guys keep pace with the class. Um, I sort of equate it to me handing you a guitar, and let's say you've never played a guitar, and asking you to play Eddie Van Halen's Eruption on the guitar in one month. If you start practicing that the day before, you are probably not going to be very good at it. Um, we all know that the way to get good at things is to practice, right? Whether it's sports or music or whatever. Um, and so it's better to practice uh, a little bit every day than to try to cram it all in the day before the test. Now, with that said, most of you will try to do that. Um, but I strongly advise you against that because you're going to see all this stuff again when you get to the other classes uh, that you're going to take like microbiology and anatomy and physiology <clears throat> and then again we'll have we'll start new chapters and this will be for the second exam um, and that's going to be on March 27th and so on so there are quizzes for every chapter and that's just for me it's, it's an assessment thing <clears throat> um, you'll have labs that you do at home so the first lab you're going to do at home is the metric system that's due February 11th you'll need to order a kit for this and I'll show you that when we get to the syllabus 
Uh, when you do the at-home labs, you always want to use the Word documents that are attached to it. So if you click on the Word document, it will bring it up or download it, and then you can open it. And then simply follow the instructions that it says. Um, and then you'll need to turn that in whenever you complete the assignment. Um, you submit everything in Canvas. I'll have to switch to the student view to show you this. And so we'll go to student view. And then we'll go to assignments. And then again, this is the show by data, show by type. I'll click on type. And so now it's sort of laid out like that. And uh, we'll go back to the metric system. And so you'll need to download this. And then when you're ready, you can submit the assignment. So click on submit assignment. And then you choose the file that you want to add to this. So let's say whatever you have. Uh, pictures uh, that you've taken or scans that you've done make sure that you submit uh, these files uh, either as jpegs or tests or or um, gifs or you can do them as pdfs or you can attach them as word documents any of those are acceptable don't upload them as your amazon file because i don't have access to your amazon drives or aws or anything like that um, and then again, just to keep in mind that uh, once you submit this assignment, it goes into sort of a repository in Canvas for you. And so let's say if you forgot to add in a particular photo, and you can't just add that in. You have to add in everything else because once you resubmit the assignment, it deletes everything that you submitted beforehand. So you have to resubmit everything. All right, so I'm going to leave the student view. Uh, it's basically like attaching uh, things to an email. Okay. okay. So the in-person labs will do these together. Um, there are basically the class is split into two because the labs only hold 24 students, but I actually have 48 in this class. And so there'll be a group one and a group two, and I'll show you that. But you should also have all of the dates that you're meeting for the labs. The labs meet on Wednesdays from 11 to uh, 150 um, in the Life Science Building LS205. Um, and so that's the room we'll meet at, and we'll complete each of these labs. These labs come from the lab manual. And I'll show you that on the syllabus. You are allowed to drop one in-person lab and one at-home lab. Okay. And then some of that stuff you won't see. There are extra credit assignments uh, that you can do for extra credit. Like I said, the first one is to post a picture on Canvas. There's a cricket assignment that will give you 10 points for the first exam. And then other extra credit assignments. Uh, blood donation, you can donate blood. Um, if you can't donate blood for whatever reason, if you make the attempt to donate blood and you can bring me proof that you did that, so you can get a note from the phlebotomist or the nurse or whoever is going to uh, draw your blood for whatever reason you can't do that, um, I will also give you credit. And then this is another lab that you can do for extra credit as well. And then all, here are all the exams, and these are the dates that they're going to happen. So you'll have your first exam on February 20th at 2 o'clock. Again, this is, uh, will be different for different classes. I'm just specifically talking about this section, which is 31172 for the spring of 2019. All right, so those are all of the assignments, and, it'll, and Canvas will tell you when you have upcoming assignments due. We go back to home usually it'll tell you right here what's what's coming up and what's due in the next week all right so discussions again you have discussion groups here and um 
this is from previous um, semesters, but I can delete this actually. So there's some questions a bunch of students have posted on here. You guys can look through this. I don't really object to that. Um, but one thing that's important is this population genetic survey. So um, you guys will need to submit in here um, whether you have a free earlobe, which is like this. So you have a earlobe that's not attached and then one that doesn't, you don't really have an earlobe at all. So if it's uh, free earlobe versus attached earlobe. This is dominant versus recessive. And then if you have a bent uh, little finger or a straight little finger, and then just type it in and then uh, respond so that we have a population genetic survey to do that sort of assignment. That's from a previous student. But if you guys want to start a study group, that's fine with me. I think students uh, learn better when they're studying in groups. But I'll get rid of this and you guys can do your own study groups. And your own, start your own discussions. Uh, grades, you don't need to see that, so I'm going to skip it, but that's where your grades will be posted. Um, these pages will give you links to outside resources, so there are web links, and then there are uh, self-paced and other YouTube videos that you can watch, like um, videos on the metric system and things like that, the bacterial lab, so this will show you how to pour your Petri dishes. quizzes we talked about uh, online tutoring there's online tutoring available uh, to students that sign up for the class so you can go to brain fuse load it up and then um, I'm not gonna authorize that but you can use that as a, a tutoring tool as well so let's go over the syllabus real quick um, and then you guys should be good to go so uh, I'm gonna download the syllabus so you can take a look at it and we can go over it. Okay. So this is the syllabus um, in Bio 181. Your, uh, the class meets on Wednesdays. This is the section. There's two different lab sections. So I just sort of made them into uh, groups. So if you're in this lab section, you'll be in group one. If you're in this lab section, you're in group two. Here's my name. This is my phone number. Although I hardly ever return calls, so uh, or I'm hardly ever in my office. I do return calls, but it usually takes me a few days to do that. The easiest way to get in touch with me is at obermiller at macecc.edu. Um, this is my office. It's a uh, NU 183 and Southern and Dawson and then I have another office at Red Mountain campus which is S268 in the Swire building. Uh, these are my office hours and if those change I'll let you know. Um, the lecture again is online and so we've talked about all of the different materials. The labs are in person so one group meets on odd weeks and the other group meets on even weeks. And so it sort of talks about this LS205 from 11 to 150. Um, if you're in group one, if you're in this section, and group two, if you're in this other section, um, you have to 
adhere to OSHA chemical standards to be in the lab. So make sure that you wear proper attire. Closed toe shoes is most important. Um, you know, if you the, the most uh, common thing that happens is people drop glassware. So um, if you wear open toe shoes, you're more likely to cut your toe off than if you're if not. And so this is basically for your safety. Uh, long pants um, and closed toed shoes are essentially what you need to do. So for the hybrid, you'll need a lab kit. You should order this by January 25th to make sure it comes in on time. And again, this is probably going to be seen by other uh, classes from other semesters. So just make sure you check the syllabus to see the date uh, that you need to order that by. Um, and then this is the link that you can go to to order it. So if I hit control and click on this, it should open up a new window, which it did. Let's expand this a little bit. So here's the kit. Uh, it's $47. Um, and then there's tax and shipping. So that takes about a week. So make sure you guys order it in time so that you have it so you can do the, your um, at-home labs. All right. Textbooks. So there's lots of different options for textbooks. You can use uh, the newest edition is the 11th edition by Campbell and Reese, but essentially they've just changed it a little bit. Um, mostly pictures so that they can make a new edition. Um, so any of these books will work all the way back to the 8th edition. Um, there are also custom editions that are available uh, for 181 students at Mesa Community College. Um, it really depends on if you're going to take Bio 182 or if you're not going to take Bio 182. So just read through that. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, some students haven't had chemistry. If you haven't had chemistry, then um, you might need an, this optional material. Uh, you will need a lab manual, so make sure that everybody purchases the lab manual before the first lab period, in-person lab. Um, we talked about computer requirements already. You have a thousand possible points in this class. Um, four exams worth 150 points each, so that's 600 points. Then each of the quizzes that you do for each chapter, they're worth 10 points each. There's actually um, 15 chapters, so you'll do 15 quizzes, so I drop uh, your lowest five quiz grades. And then the labs are worth 25 points each, so there's six, seven in person and seven at home. And then again, I dropped the lowest for each one of those. So that gives you a total of 1,000 points. And then I think there's roughly uh, 70 or 80 points worth of extra credit. Um, I don't give makeup exams. So if you miss an exam for whatever reason, the final counts twice. So it'll be worth 300 points. Um, in order to pass this class, you have to take at least two lecture exams in the final exam. So you're allowed to miss uh, one exam without penalty um, we talked about the quizzes um, lectures online and you guys know that it's self-paced this is just the links for the videos and other uh, there's other resources the internet's full of them Khan Academy is good um, there's uh, in a minute videos on YouTube that are helpful too uh, those have a lot of green screen in them um, obviously they don't give me an, enough funds to make a full production uh, video. Um, so uh, if you're a visual learner, those might help you. You have to uh, attend the labs. Those are required. Like I said, if you miss a lab, um, you're allowed to miss one lab, one in-person lab. After that, you'll lose 25 points for missing labs. Um, you can come, if you're in group one, you can come to group two lab, but you have to let me know in advance so that I can make sure there's enough space because there's only so many students allowed per lab. There's only so many chairs. Um, so anyway, just uh, go through this. 
that talks about Canvas, the withdrawal policies, uh, rules for visitation. You can't either drink or smoke in the classroom. Um, and talks about tutoring help. This is the schedule for the labs, so the at-home labs. Again, these are when they're due, and then these are YouTube videos you should watch to help you with doing the labs on your own. Um, and then uh, these are the labs at school. So, for example, uh, week one, which would be group one, will meet on January 16th, and we'll do the protist lab. And then group two will meet on January 23rd and we'll do the exact same lab. And then the labs will be set up for new labs for week three and four and so on. And we'll follow the schedule. And then this is where the exams will be given. And you should have that on your schedule and the times they'll be uh, given. And as the exams approach, and I will see you guys in lab, we'll talk about exactly what you need for the exams. This isn't the real class schedule. This is a class schedule that my in-person class uh, follows. And so this is just to keep you on pace. So, for example, for this week, you should be done with all the Chapter 1 material, which means you should have watched the lectures, all the lectures that cover all of Chapter 1. You should have done the crosswords for Chapter 1. You should have done the study guides for Chapter 1. Um, you should have taken the quizzes for chapter one um, and all the materials for chapter one because uh, next week we will start into chapter two and so on and then pretty soon you'll have an exam which is shown here which will covers chapter one through five um, and then all of these are laid out the times and everything for the exams and of course I reserve the right to change this due to time constraints but for the most part, um, I've been doing this long enough to know that this is exactly the schedule that we'll follow. Um, so anyway, if you have any questions, again, feel free to email me at obermiller at mesacc.edu. Um, and then I will see you guys shortly for your first lab period, uh, in-person lab. Make sure that you buy a lab manual. They're only available at the MCC bookstore um you'll need that um for the first lab all right so i'm um, looking forward to seeing you soon um, and make sure that you keep up with the materials um so that you don't get behind